Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video, and this video is going to be a continuation in my Mars to Earth series that I'm doing. I think this will be a short series because in this series I'm focusing mostly on the execution of the flight and not really spending any time talking about the, uh, the IMFD and TransX setup part of the flight. Now, in the last video, we brought the uh, XR2 from Olympus and got it up into orbit. So we're here in orbit and we're, uh, we completed the orbit circularization. And we calculated that uh, after the ride to orbit, we, would, we still had enough fuel left over to do our injection burn. Because keep in mind, one of, the really, one of the things I'm really focusing on in this flight is that fuel calculation. I want to be able to, I want to show that you can calculate uh, you know, your fuel usage, your fuel needs to a very high degree of accuracy. And I think it's really interesting to do that. Maybe other people aren't quite as interested in that as I am. Maybe you just like to uh, have unlimited fuel, or maybe you like to load up the, you know, the aero freighter and have 100, meter, 100 kilometers, 100 kilometers per second worth of Delta V at your disposal. That's all well and good. But I find it really fun to kind of have that sort of minimalist approach to orbiter and seeing the bare minimum that I need to get from point A to point B. So let's switch uh, camera views here. And let's get on with the flight. We uh, need to bring up TransX again on this side. And let me actually save, because in the previous video I saved at the end of the video, but I forgot to have TransX loaded on one side. I and mean, if you don't have TransX loaded, when you do a quick save, then, you, it, then the save file doesn't have your TransX data in it. So one of the other things I was uh, showing at the other, in the other video was that our relative inclination was a little bit off. But as I mentioned in that video, it's trending downward in our favor. So we might not, we may not necessarily want to fix it because you can see here, if we come around to this point and let's say we bring our relative inclination all the way to zero, then uh, in fact, it's, in fact, it's going so far, it's counting down so quickly that it's actually going to go the other way. So we would actually, if we do any correction at all, we want to correct in the other direction. So now it's counting up. Now it's working uh, less and less in our favor. Translation. Rotation. One thing we can do, and uh, this is fairly intuitive or fairly easy to understand, but now that we're rotate up where we can kind of count we we can see here that it's good that our burn isn't going to be for 1900 seconds and we can kind of get an idea of how fast this is counting up so this is counting up like let's say that number is one second at a time so that would be one second that would be every that goes up every 10 seconds then probably that one goes up every 100 seconds about like that so if we're 1,040 seconds out from the time to begin the burn, then we can kind of get an idea of how much we would want to offset this relative inclination by. Translation. I'm translating the wrong way. So if I translate a little bit up, And you might think, what are you doing? You know, your relative inclination is getting worse. Yes, it's getting worse, but notice that it's counting down. So what I would like to do is I would like to get it to count down at the same rate as the begin burn. Uh, it's a little hard to guess what that's going to be exactly. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll just check it every, you know, 10 minutes or so until we get over to do the burn. Uh, we are still a ways out, so there's no need to necessarily set the burn up yet. Uh, that's going to be the. We're going to use IMFD for all of our navigation back to Earth. Let me check something here too, because that's actually counting up now. So, hmm, that's interesting. I wonder if it's kind of wobbling in and out. I'm not, I'm not actually sure what to do if I should correct that now or because I mean obviously the the uh, lower it is when you do the correction the less correction you have to make um, let me go ahead and wait let me go ahead and warp time forward till I'm at a thousand seconds from the time to do the burn and then we'll see what we need to do on that relative inclination 
I wouldn't think Phobos and Deimos would be have enough gravity to affect, you know, to affect it. Okay, yeah, hmm, it's getting actually quite a bit worse as we go around. So let's go ahead and uh, correct our relative inclination now. And we know which way to orient based on the looking at the the bubbles, uh, for lack of a better term. I don't know that there's any other way to know. But you can see that this transex, uh, this the line of nodes, this bubble is not filled in, and this one is filled in. The one that's filled in is normal minus. There's no good way to remember that. You just have to, you just have to know it. So the one that's filled in is normal minus. That means this one is normal plus. And let me actually double check my notes on that because I'm not 100% sure I said that right. Uh, yeah, the one that's filled in is normal minus. So we want to be oriented to the normal plus, plus position. Wow, that is getting drastically worse by the second. I don't understand that. I guess it's because our orbit is so polar. Rotation. Translation. Rotation. So we're going to rotate to a normal plus, and we're going to do it ourselves so that it is more efficient. But once here at normal plus, we will uh, use the autopilot to keep us locked into this position for a moment. Let's bring the line of nodes around. Holy cow, I cannot understand that. Wait a minute, that, that can't be right. I must have I must have shot it around the other direction. There is no way that's right. I do that sometimes. I swing the line of nodes around so much that that's... Okay, that's what's going on. I was like, what in the world? But we still are a full degree out at this position. And unfortunately, since the nodes swung around the other way, now I'm going to have to rotate the vessel to normal minus. Translation. Rotation. I, I think that it's it's because I'm so polar polar in my orbit. Remember I took off at a heading of um, I took off at a heading of fifteen degrees, so that's the only thing that's the only way I can reconcile the fact that the relative inclination is changing so fast. And I might be wrong on that. Okay, we're almost at that position. There we got it. So let's uh, get the line of nodes settled here again. Now that's better. I mean, that's odd. Why is it? It's blowing my mind what's going on right now. I mean, we went from... And now it's trending downward again. So by the time we get over to the time to do the burn, we only have a relative inclination of 0.11. So let's do this. Let's leave the line of nodes at that position because that's when we're going to do the burn. And let's go to the uh, normal minus. Translation. And let's just translate until this says it'll be zero at that point. Maybe that'll work. I could use a little bit of main engine, apparently. And let's see what it does now at that point. Still 0.03. Kind of doing something new here that I haven't done before, so hopefully this works out. Let me bring this around because obviously it's spinning the other way. That might be good enough, uh, you know, 0 0.01. Let's go and see if we can get it a little bit better. Okay, 
So in theory, the line of nodes or relative inclination should be close to zero by the time we get to that point. All right, well, since we did do a, a burn there, I need, to, I need to log it because I need to know what I spent. So burn time calculator says we now have 2231. So let me go to the flight log. And I spent 23 meters per second on that aligned plane maneuver. That's that's acceptable, but it doesn't give us a whole lot of delta V to play with. All right, now we definitely need to uh, set up our plan because we've only got 400 seconds till we uh, burn. So interplanetary on this side, menu, and the best way for me to do this at this point is to just go straight to the delta V program. I think there's probably a slightly better way to do it, but I'm not 100% comfortable with um, IMFD yet. So we're going to set the time to do the ejection to 465, enter, and we're going to set the delta V to the same number that we see here, which is 2034. Now we're basically done with transects, I believe, so we can bring interplanetary up on this side, and we want to share it with that side, the uh, delta velocity program. Bring up map, and we want to target Mars, or Earth, and now we want to do all this clicky stuff here, shut off the auto zoom, turn on the display, and we need to page over, turn on the plan, and then we need to turn on the SOI, page back over, and now we can select Earth. And now we can play with our Delta V program in order to bring the PEA at Earth down to a low number. Now, unfortunately, even IMFD isn't absolutely perfect. And when we go out to Mars, it's wonderful that we can set the PEA to like 2,000 kilometers below the surface. And then when we arrive at Mars, we're basically, we have almost no mid-course correction. It's like one meter per second. Going in the other direction, going, going from the going in toward the sun, basically, it's not nearly as accurate. It's still probably a whole lot better than Transex, but it's just not perfect. So we'll do what we can, but note that we're going to have mid-course corrections. All right, first of all, let's play with the time at an adjustment of one. And going forward is bringing it down, so let's continue doing that until it won't go any lower. Okay, we're kind of going the other way now, so let's stop here at the uh, 36 point. And let's do the delta V adjustment to see what that does for us. Going that way with it is not helping. Okay, uh, neither way is helping. So now we have to kind of do some tran do some do a bit of guesswork here. If we Bring down the time, maybe a little bit more, to bring the PEA up to say 100 kilometer or 100 whatever. Then we bring the delta V down. Then you can see it brings the PEA down overall. And that's one of those sort of intuitive things that you just get used to when using Transex or IMFD. So now we'll go the other way. We'll bring the Delta V down until the PEA is like maybe that. Now we'll go back and do a time adjustment, and then it should have the PEA lower overall yet. And it does. Okay, so maybe one, two, three clicks. Now we'll be a little bit more careful with our overshooting. 15, 14, it's still trending downwards, so let's go to say 28 there, that's good. Now take away some more time. Now we're all the way down to 10, 12, and we want to be really careful when we get in really close because the smallest amount of adjustments make a big difference, so you don't want to overshoot a lot anymore. So now we're down to 8, and that goes up to 9. Uh, let's do one more click, take it out to 13. Now we'll adjust the TEJ, and that's got us down to 5, 7. Okay, let's bring the 
do a couple more clicks on the time until it, we overshoot out to 10. And actually with the way that's trending downward, I think we may just go with this. Let's see though, let's actually do this also. Let's zoom in on Earth. So, and the way we need to do that, if we type in Earth, it's gonna zoom in on where Earth is at right now. We want to zoom in on where Earth is going to be at the time that we plan on arriving. So the way we do that is by typing p-earth, and we'll zoom in. And what we can do before we decide that we declare victory on this is maybe come to plane change and make sure that our nodes are kind of where Earth is at. See how these triangles or squares kind of move over toward Earth when you put in a little bit of plane change and outward. I can't really tell which way it's going. Let me zoom out a bit. And I'm not really looking at the PEA at this point. I'm just looking at those uh, square boxes. Let's see what inward outward does in that regard. also bring down the PEA. Hmm. I, I'm used to seeing there's a there's a straight dashed line where I don't see where it's at. Usually it'll be from the uh, target. It'll be pointing right to the target potty. Maybe, uh, maybe I don't have that on. Let me check here. That's it. So you have to press the INT button also. Okay. Uh, actually, no, that's not what I was looking for. Or maybe it is. Again, I'm, I'm not real versed with transects, uh, with interplanetary MFD, so you have to forgive me for some of these, some of these unknowns. This, this isn't the line that I'm used to seeing. There's a, there's a blue dashed line that points to one of these boxes. That's what I'm looking for. I'm not seeing it, but nevertheless, our PEA is um, quite low. It's trending upward at the moment, so we'll see if we can... Set that to zero. And again, you see when going back to Earth, it doesn't hold nearly as steady as when you go the other direction. Let's go previous. Just a small amount of plane change here. It's not much at all. Let me also press page and auto burn to give the uh, give delta v pro give the delta v program time to get in position this is also something that i would do manually but i'm noticing that i'm coming up to the uh, time here pretty quick and i feel like the best we can really do for this is just to kind of get the get it to a as well as we can but it changes so quickly that they're you know we're not going to get it all the way to a zero and have it hold there or anything like that. So we still have 85 seconds. I can dabble with it, dabble with it a little bit more. Okay, I guess that's okay. It's trending downward. So after this burn's done, then we will do another calculation to make sure that we have the expected amount of fuel left over for mid-course corrections because going back to Earth from Mars you're not going to go back. You're not going to do that for just one meter per second like you do in the other direction. Okay. Looks like this is. Eh, now it's going up. It's crazy. Yeah, something like that's the best we're going to get. And you don't want to do any time or uh, prograde adjustments at this point. These two are much more delicate than the plane change and the inward outward. So we're going to be doing the burn here in just 15 seconds. And once we start the burn, we'll turn the plan off so we can watch how things progress in real time. I'm thinking too, 
if I had maybe maybe if I planned on going back to Earth on a different date, and I could actually have a 90 degree uh, heading when I left Mars, then maybe it wouldn't be so delicate here when you're setting up the interplanetary MFD plan. I'm not sure. I haven't really gone to um, I haven't really gone to too many planets where I've had to take such a steep steep heading off on takeoff. All right, let's uh, warp time four through the burn. And again, we transferred the RCS over to the main because, you know, if you didn't, then you wouldn't even be able to complete this burn. Warnings, main fuel low. System let's watch the uh, burn vector page so we can see, there we go, how much time and how much fuel will we have left to burn. And then we can watch our PEA at Earth. And that's uh, that's the burn complete. So let's Rotation. Translation. translate, see if we can clean it up a little bit because that didn't get us exactly all the way down. And uh, we'll go with, uh, you know, something like that. Now, if we bring up burn time calculator, again, and I'll have to switch views because the, because of the fuel mass thing. So, again, I really hope they can add something to this to not have to type this in all the time. So we have 197 meters per second remaining. So let's uh, put that into our flight log. 197 555 five, five. not that really we need that many decimal points but so the dv used to do the injection burn was 2033.445 let's compare that to what we said it would cost or what we calculated that it would cost bearing in mind that there is always some small difference between what you calculate the injection cost to be and what it actually is and there's two reasons for that Number one is your orbital altitude. When you calculate the injection cost, you are saying that you're going to be in, for example, a 200 by 200 circular orbit. Or you might say that you're going to be in a 300 by 300 circular orbit, whatever it is. But when you actually get into orbit, you probably are never in a perfect 200 by 200 circular orbit, especially if you have non-spherical gravity sources enabled. So the fact that your altitude is going to be off by a kilometer or so in either direction means that your DV used to inject is going to be slightly different. The other reason is timing. When you calculate, um, actually, I think it's mainly just the altitude. So that's what we said it would cost, and what it, uh, or rather, that's what it actually did cost was 2033, and our calculation said that it was going to cost 2035. So there. Uh, this was, t uh, we calculated two meters per second more. So in this case, it actually worked out in our favor that we spent two meters per second less than we calculated we would. Now let's look at our calculator on this side uh, to see how much fuel we'll have remaining after the injection burn. We calculated that we would have 189.49. We actually have 197.556. So again, you might be tempted to completely celebrate and say, that's awesome, you have 10 meters per second more than you thought you would. That's, that's good in one sense, but it's also, it also means that your, your calculations weren't 100% accurate. Now, 10 meters per second is such a small number that I would say it's, it's basically 100% accurate. But if you have you know 400 meters per second left over after you do the injection burn, you know, don't be happy because it just means that your calculations weren't very good. All right, so that's that. Now we are ready to go forward, and we're going to do our first mid-course correction around 100 days. And we're also saying here that by the time we leave Mars and go forward 100 days, we're going to gain 19.79 meters per second. So we're saying that by the time we get to the to do the mid-course correction will have 209.28.
but since we're starting with a little bit more DV to begin with, uh, 197.556, so let's actually kind of type that in off to the side just as a temporary note. So then by the time we get to, to do the mid-course correction, we, I calculate that I'll actually have, we'll take that number there, G25, plus this number here, which, uh, which is F29. So I calculate that we'll have 217, 3.4. Now I know it's actually going to be a little bit higher than that because we're starting with a little bit more DV to begin with. So our DV gain is going to be a little bit more. And I don't uh, have a quick, easy way to uh, calculate the, the actual DV gain. I'd have to do some changes on the spreadsheet to do that. Maybe I'll add an override on this side as well, continue the override down so that I can put in the actual numbers as I do them. Actually, that's a good idea. I'm definitely going to do that. But I'm calculating that we'll have basically uh, 217, probably be more like 218, 219 when we get to do the mid-course, the first mid-course correction. That's if we do it at 100 days. And we may not, we may not actually want to do it at exactly 100 days. Okay, well, uh, we're actually at 30 minutes, close to 30 minutes on this video, so... It's a good stopping point. Let me go ahead and uh, control S. We don't need to have transx loaded because we're done with transx. Certainly a good idea to have interplanetary MFD loaded though. And on this side, it doesn't really matter. So yeah, we can save here. And when we come back, we will uh, do the uh, uh, trip f uh, over to Earth, you know, to complete the, 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 the transit, the transfer over to Earth. So if you like this part of the video, please hit the like button down below. If you didn't like it, hit the don't like button. If you're sick of me saying that at the end of my videos, leave a comment down below and maybe I'll come up with a new thing to say at the end of the videos. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed and you like all this content. That way you can be notified when I upload new videos. And I'll mention again that I have an FAQ. That's a frequently asked questions. A lot of people don't notice it, but it's at the very bottom of the description down below if you click on that. You can uh, read over my FAQ. I think it's pretty well done, so check it out if you haven't seen it before uh, because it'll answer a lot of the questions that people kind of, they, they send me private messages or they post messages on the uh, on on YouTube and they, they just, they commonly get asked the same stuff. Let's just put it that way. Um, that's about it. Uh, I have a Facebook page, a fan page. If you're not um, already familiar with that, Check the description below for the link to my fan page. You can like my fan page. And by doing that, you'll get to see when I post new videos. And on my Facebook page, because it's kind of a social network, I can also put up pictures. I can put up articles to other cool space stuff and occasionally just post some random thoughts that I have or whatever. So check that out as well. And I will see you in the next video.